Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Leshrac. So Leshrac is a classic magic damage dealing mid-hero, and there have been times in the past where he's played offlane and even support like a long, long time ago, but those are rare exceptions, so we're just going to focus on the mid lane version of Leshrac, because it's really played the same no matter what. And Lesh is a little bit different, actually, than other magic damage dealing mids, where a lot of those heroes have some sort of right-click component. So if you think about, you know, the Spirit heroes, or Puck, or Lena, all of those heroes do a decent bit of right-click damage, or at least can go builds where they do a decent bit of right-click damage, where Leshrac pretty much doesn't right-click at all. Like, there's no real build where he can go right-click Lesh. That's just not a thing. Instead, the hero functions more like a Timber or a Bristleback, or even like a Death Prophet, where you run in with all your spells, and you tank a bunch of damage, and you deal a bunch of AoE damage in return. And actually, like Death Prophet, you can do a lot of tower damage on Lesh. The difference between a hero like Lesh and Death Prophet is that Lesh has relatively low cooldown spells. And so, really, the only limit to your damage is your mana pool, sort of like Storm Spirit. So, you can see Lesh is a very unique hero. He has similarities to many other heroes in small aspects, but his overall playstyle and abilities are very one of a kind. But before we can understand how to play Leshrac, we have to take a look at his abilities. So now that we understand Leshrac in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that good, unique magic damage or spell damage hero like I talked about. So first we're going to take a look at Split Earth. This is a pretty straightforward spell. You can see there's an AoE that you can cast it in, and then this blue AoE is actually the AoE stun that comes out. So let me just cast it over there, and after a short delay, you see these spikes kind of come up out of the ground. So I'll just cast this there on the axe. And so actually, because you can cast it like at the edge here, uh, the, the range is actually like a little further because you can cast it there, but obviously the AoE goes out so I can still stun the axe that far away. And it does some damage, stuns them pretty well. I did max this out before I showed you it, so just keep in mind that actually the level 1 of this ability has a very small AoE and it gets bigger as you level it up. So just keep that in mind. It's a little bit harder to hit early on. And then the other thing I'm just going to say about this is that you can see the cast animation is pretty obvious and pretty long, so it's kind of like Lena's stun in that way. But it's even more obvious that you're going to be casting it, I feel, than almost any other spell in the game. Like, it's very, very clear that you're trying to stun, because it's just different than anything else that this hero does, like any animation. And so the enemy is going to know that. So you're going to want to set this up with another spell, or with an item, or with another stun. I mean, you can also hit it just straight up if someone's running away, and you can kind of predict where they're going to be. Or you can really just use it as something to, like, pump fake. So, you know, you just click the stun but then you actually stop it in the middle of doing it and so it doesn't go off and it kind of confuses the enemy makes them try to run away and stuff like that so you can really use that to your advantage actually instead of it just being a weakness of the ability so that's split earth and i'll show you in a second once we talk about the other abil abilities how to actually like combo this with one of your other abilities but next we're going to move on to diabolic edict and right now this does pure damage in the past it did uh, magic damage they have changed it up but pure damage always really really good because it just can't be reduced um which is great, other than just like flat incoming damage reduction, which is kind of rare. Usually it's armor or magic resistance and stuff like that, which pure damage cuts through. So Diabolic Edict, it's kind of an AoE spell in the sense that it does go off in this AoE around you. And at the same time, though, it is sort of a weird single target spell. Like it doesn't just hit everything in that AoE. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So if I press this, these little like dots kind of go off all in this AoE. If I get near this axe, they're all hitting this axe. But if I go next to all these other axes, you can see it's not hitting every axe all at once. Like, it actually chooses kind of which one to go to based on this AoE. So, like, they're not all taking the same damage. So, it's kind of just dishes out, like, a flat amount of damage. And then either one target will take that damage or all the targets will spread that damage around in that AoE. So, keep that in mind. And that's why it's actually good for pushing towers if there's no creeps around. So if you didn't know, this actually does hit towers and buildings. This is how this hero is very good at pushing. But you usually want to clear all the creeps away, or maybe, you know, even if there's a hero there, it's going to be tanking some of that. And so you want to use your other abilities to clear the creeps, and then this is going to only hit the tower, so it just, like, melts those towers, which is really, really good. So that's Diabolic Edict. And then next we have Lightning Storm. This is a pretty straightforward ability as well. You just kind of click it on the enemy, and you can see it just does damage there. But the other thing it does is it bounces to other enemies or creeps in the area. And so this is good because this helps you last hit and farm and harass kind of all at the same time. And then later 
later in the game you can use it obviously for farming as well or you know once you max it out or have other spells i mean a lot of your spells do good aoe damage and this is no exception so it just kind of is one extra thing that amps up the damage but the real thing that this does that is actually like the strongest part of it later in the game because early on it's for harassing and all that stuff is it also slows so you can see if i press this on the axe he slowed and it's not that long of a slow but it is significant enough that like i'm just going to put the axe over here I'm just going to have him run this way, and if I do this and then stun, you can see that I can combo those two things together so that it really is easier to hit the split earth with no other abilities or no other setups you know, from other heroes or anything like that. And so that's how you can kind of combo these two together. If somebody's running away and you're in range, you can just lightning storm them and then stun them, and they're really not going to be able to run away from that. It's like very hard unless, I mean, even if they have some kind of dispel where they can dispel the slow, it's really not a long enough slow that you're going to be able to kind of juke that in a way. It's just like, if you're at max range, then maybe they can juke it. But if they're running away from you and it's kind of clear where they're running, it's going to be a lot easier to hit that split earth when you use that lightning storm. And so that's how you're going to combo those abilities. And then lastly, we have his ultimate. And this is the straight up real true AoE spell that does insane damage. So what you do is you click this ability on and then it pulses every so often. A little pulse comes out and does damage in an AoE. And this is unlike Diabolic Edict. This is actually doing straight up AoE damage. And... There are some tricks where you like turn it on and turn it off, or there used to be, I think, um, back in the day, and I think they kind of got rid of that. I wasn't, I'm not a huge Leshrac player, but I would just not really focus on those parts of it, if that's even a thing anymore, where you can like save mana by turning it on and off. I don't really think they have that anymore. I think they actually nerfed it back in the day um, from being able to do that. So now really all you need to consider is that you just turn this on, and then it does damage, and then when you turn it off, there's a small cooldown, so it's not like you're like pressing it a bunch, um, so just keep that in mind. So it also drains mana per second, so right now I have free spells on, but you can see as I press it that the spell itself was free to put on, but then it's draining every pulse, you know, it drains some mana, so just keep that in mind. And this is why this hero's mana pool is really the thing that limits the damage, because you can press these abilities, that's just kind of a flat mana to get these abilities out. But then the whole time during the fight or when you're farming or doing damage, you're just going to be draining mana constantly. And so you can see the damage goes up, but the mana also goes up as well with each level. So just keep that in mind. And that is Pulse Nova. It's a pretty straightforward ability, but this is how you're going to be doing most of your damage in the fights and how you're going to be, you know, scaling into the later game with the hero to just do a ton of damage. Now, obviously, magic damage doesn't do great scaling but really there's just pumps out so much damage that you, if you have this running and you have a lot of mana like they're not going to be able to withstand it over time and then i will talk briefly about the shard um because the shard is pretty important so this amps up your split earth and what it does is let me just stun this axe here you can see there's just like this gray aoe and this pulsing that happens because actually over time there's more stuns that come out and the aoe actually increases so this is great for defending towers even pushing towers kind of just like taking over a space in a team fight, anything like that, you know, um, if there's one avenue of escape wherever you're fighting, you can just put this down and then a bunch of other stuns come out. And you can even put like two of them on the ground because this is a relatively low cooldown spell. And so it's really, really good for that. Um, yeah, especially high ground, like I said. I just think, you know, in that AoE, that radius right at the tower, it's just a great place to put it, whether you're going offensively or defensively. And then lastly, we are going to look at the Ags, which is not something that um, is bought a ton all the, like all the time. It's not an every game kind of item on the hero, but it is something that is pretty good. So what this does is it actually turns you ethereal and everything around you ethereal. So basically you can just do more damage. So right now that's not really doing anything. But again, if I press this and then I press my alt, like now I'm doing insane damage with everything else. Uh, all of my other abilities too, like if Diabolic Edict is going off, it just makes the damage amped up even further, which is crazy. But obviously you have to do, you have to be careful with the hero um, because it's similar to like a necro kind of thing where, you know, when you press this, yes, now you don't take physical damage, but you're more vulnerable. And one of the big kind of ways this hero functions is it's all about going and dishing it and dealing a ton of damage, but also you're relatively squishy. Like your HP doesn't scale all that well. You like to buy items that give you HP, give you mana pool, give you tankiness, but a lot of times you are vulnerable to burst damage and this makes it even more like all in risk reward kind of thing. So just keep that in mind. Um, and so that is the Ags, that's the Agnum Scepter. Those are Leshrac's abilities. Now let's jump into a game and see how he's played.
Now, Leshrax laning stage is all about using your abilities to secure last hits while simultaneously harassing the enemy. So we kind of saw that in the abilities part, how, you know, all of these abilities have some kind of AoE or multi-target function. And so because of that, it's easy to push waves, but it's also easy to kind of not secure last hits exactly because all the skills aren't really exact you know it's like kind of hard to control the damage so you need to be very specific and kind of understand when to use them and part of understanding when to use them and using those abilities most efficiently is pump faking them like i showed you with the stun you just really want to be using that pump faking with the stun to bait the enemy in make them go like run back and just kind of using the threat of your abilities almost more than your actual abilities half the time because that is really going to be the difference between between just a regular normal like I'm playing Leshrac for the first time or I have 10 games under Leshrac and like a very good well you know practiced and efficient and good Leshrac player it's all about pump faking the abilities using the threat of the abilities and just annoying your opponent so they don't really know exactly what you're going to be doing while also getting your farm and getting all of those last hits then transitioning out of the laning stage Yes, level 6 is pretty important on the hero, but it's actually not the biggest deal because at the time, you don't really have a ton of mana pool when you hit level 6 to just be using your ult all the time. Sure, you can use it to clear a wave or clear a camp, and yes, you're going to be using a you know your bottle and the runes and stuff, but that's not the main focus. I think the main focus at that early game after the laning stage portion is when are you maxing out your Diabolic Edict and when are you going to be able to push towers because this hero is really, really good at just melting towers, especially in the mid lane like if the mid hero leaves you push the wave and you just melt that tower and that's really the threat is the enemy has to decide are they going to use one maybe even two heroes to defend the mid tower or are you going to take it and that's really the important timing on the hero and then from there obviously you can rotate to the other parts of the map you can take the other tier one towers which i think is really important on the hero because he just pushes so quickly and then you're also pretty good at ganking now you don't have a surprise initiation like you know a lot of other ganking mid laners like a puck or any spirit hero, but as long as you get on top of the enemy, you're going to dish out massive amounts of damage. So if you can sneak through the woods, you can go like kind of behind the tower, whatever it is, and you can just get on top of them, you're going to deal a ton of damage. But the key is that you need to be careful because later in the game, you're going to be buying items like Yules, BKB, you know, whatever it is, something that makes you tanky, gives you more armor, gives you more magic resistance, gives you an escape all those kinds of things, but that's once you get those items. That's later. That's 20 minutes plus. In the early game portion, you really need to be careful about where you're going and how you're pushing the hero to its limits because you're very, very squishy. So although you can deal a ton of damage, you can also be killed relatively quickly. And so you need to be very careful when ganking or when taking fights in that early game because all the times that you are spending dead, of course, could be times that you're clearing stacks, pushing waves, taking towers, all those kinds of things. So it is really a risk reward type of hero. Then in later game team fights, Lesh is all about pressing all of his spells and then running into the middle of the fight because obviously you're doing all this AOE damage. So you just want to be in the middle of the pack with all the enemies around you, kind of like Death Prophet, like where she just pops her ultimate and runs in and you're going to be buying items in a similar way too, like Yules, Bloodstone, Shiva's, BKB, just stuff to survive so you can survive going into the middle of everybody. And so anything that gives you more tank ability while also allowing you to dish out more damage is going to be a great item on Lesh. But the key is really knowing your limits. That is the key to the hero in general, but especially later on in the game when there's more burst damage, more ways for people to stun you and get on top of you and all that kind of stuff. It's just really knowing what targets to prioritize, when to go in, do I initiate with the hero or do I wait for initiation? from my team or the enemy team do I counter initiate you know all those kinds of things do I need a blink because I need to actually get to a specific spot all that kind of stuff it's all about positioning with this hero and understanding your limits and so that's why this is a pretty complicated hero not just because there's all these little things you need to do in the laning stage or here and there to actually push the hero to its limits but it's just that it's all about positioning and dealing that damage while also getting the most return uh, with soaking damage as well because you're going to soak spells you're going to like you know have the focus of the enemy and so you are sort of like a squishier version in a sense of a bristleback or a timber saw where like they have to deal with you because you're doing so much damage but it's a little bit easier to deal with you sometimes but if they don't deal with you you will just melt everybody you will kill everyone and then you will push their base extremely fast extremely effectively and then the last thing to consider on Lesh is that he is a great great split pushing hero. Now he may not have a mobility spell like a blink or anything like that, but he does have very fast movement speed and he can buy boots of travel and even blink, you know, the item in certain games. So sometimes it's just going to be a matter of 
your team cannot fight out of the map. Maybe you're behind, you're losing, you know, whatever it is, you just feel like the matchup isn't good. So taking 5v5 team fights in the jungle is just going to lose. You know, that's just what it is. So the best way you're going to, you know, have a chance at winning is that 5v5 fight when you're defending your base. And if that's the case, in these games, Leshrac is a great hero to force the enemy to chase around the map and just you know split them up because they constantly have to deal with lanes because you're just pushing lanes so quickly and then if they don't deal with you you just melt their towers and you even melt their racks and their base and so you're great for that to just prolong the game get your farm and be a nuisance to the enemy in those specific instances and then you can obviously tp back and then have a really good fight in your base with all the vision and all that extra armor and all that kind of stuff that has you know just helps leshrac survive and deal out a lot of damage to win games so leshrac is a great hero for just prolonging and just like squeaking out wins in situations where you might be losing and that, everyone, is my Leshrac guide. If you liked the video or found it helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.